Hello, welcome to BL 101 New Testament Greek for Beginners Lesson 7. In this lesson, we're going to be going over the vocabulary words for Lesson 7 beginning in paragraph 77. But before we begin, let's open in a word of prayer. Lord, we want to thank you, Father, for the opportunity to study your word and to learn Greek, Lord, that we might be able to study your New Testament even further. Father, please, we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus, that you'd open up our eyes, ears, heart, and mind to what you have for us to learn today, Lord. There's so many things in this world, Lord, that's grabbing for our attention. Father, we just ask you right now that you clear our minds and allow us to focus on this work. In Christ's name do we ask this. Amen. In Lesson 7, we're going to be dealing with masculine nouns of the first declension. But wait, you might be asking, is not the first declension feminine nouns? Well, yes, but like before in the past, we've learned that while one noun looks like one gender, it might be another gender. We had uh, nouns that looked like masculine, but in essence, they were feminine nouns. Well, here, we're going to have nouns uh, that we're going to learn here that look feminine, but are actually masculine. So in lesson seven, that's one of the things we're going to cover right here. The other portion that we're going to cover are the issue of prepositions. And prepositions are very important. Um, I know I took, before I took first year Greek myself, I went through a secular college and I learned English, but I never fully grasped the uh, parts of speech like a preposition until I hit first year Greek. And I learned that prepositions are words that show relationship, uh, whether something is under something or over or passing through, or whether it's in or moving into. Uh, all these words are prepositions. And this chapter is gonna introduce you to prepositions as well. Okay, so if we can, let's begin in paragraph 77 of Machen's textbook. Okay, the first word in our vocabulary list is the word angloss. Angloss, that's an alpha, with a smooth breather mark, and it's the word ungloss. That's where we get our word angel from. Now, when you do your word studies, you're going to find out that ungloss, yes, it means angel, but primarily it means a messenger. Okay? So ungloss means an angel or a messenger. Second word, ago. Ago. It means I lead. Third word, this is our first preposition, it means apo, apo. Now, apo, when it's found with a genitive, means from, okay? This is a key thing that you'll learn with prepositions, is that prepositions, uh, they change with relationship to the word they're working with, okay? So the word apo, when it's working with a genitive, means from. Fourth word, balo. Balo. Balo means I throw, I cast, I put. Uh, think of a ball, I throw a ball. Balo. Next word we're working with is the word dia. Dia. This is a preposition, works with a genitive, and it means through. Dia with the genitive means through, but when dia works with an accusative, it means on account of. This is important to know, very important to know. Dia with the genitive means through. He went through the tunnel, okay? But dia with the accusative means on account of, okay? Next word. Ace, ace, it's a preposition that works with the accusative. It means into. Now you'll notice ace, and we're going, we'll come back to ek, but n, n is a preposition. It works with the dative, it means in, okay? 
Well, is not into and in the same thing? Well, yes, in English we could throw back and forth, but in the Greek, no, absolutely not. You see, ace works with the accusative, into, it shows movement, okay? We're moving into this land or into this territory. Ace, the preposition ace shows movement, okay? It's a dynamic word. N, on the other hand, it's a preposition. It works with a dative. It means in. It's a static. Absolutely no movement. Uh, when we are saved, we are N Christos, or in Christ. Uh, you'll see this a lot in the New Testament. Okay? So you have ace, preposition with the accusative meaning into. And you also have N, which is a preposition, works with a dative. It's a static word meaning in, okay? Next, we're going to hop back here to ek. Ek, or if it falls before a vowel, it's x, okay? So ek is a preposition, works with the genitive. It means out of, out of, okay? Um, if I threw the word, uh, you have the word balo up here. It means I throw. But you could also have the Greek word ekbalo. Well, what does ekbalo mean? Ekbalo means he threw it out. I ekbaloed the trash out the window. He threw it out. Do you understand? Uh, this is one of the things that makes Greek wonderful to look at. It emphasizes, a preposition can emphasize a verb that it's working with, like ekbalo, okay? Or you could have a form of an Ace ballo, throwing it into, okay? So, the word ek, if it comes before a vowel, it's x. Hopping down here to the next one, we have already dealt with the word n. We're going to look at the word theos. Theos. It's where we get our word theology from. Theos, simple word meaning a god, okay? Uh, when it means God, Theos may have the article. You'll see a lot of times they'll talk about the God, Ha Theos, the God. Okay. Next word up here to the right is the word cosmos. Cosmos. Um, in America, we have astronauts. In Russia, they have cosmonauts. Uh, it's also where we get a word cosmos from. Uh, cosmos means a world. Okay. Next word down here is the word lithos. Lithos. Lithos means a stone. Now here's a word here that's unique. And this is why we're dealing with um, chapter 7, lesson 7. Uh, here's the word mathetes. Well, mathetes, if you look at it, it says, well, that's, isn't that feminine? Well, no, no, notice the masculine article that Machen gives with it. So that mathetes is a masculine noun, okay? It looks feminine, but it's actually a masculine. It means a disciple. So if you're named Matthew, or if you know someone named Matthew, it comes from the word mathetes, meaning a disciple. Okay? Here's the next word. Meno. Meno. Verb, I remain. Okay? Another preposition. Meta. Meta. When it's with a genitive, it means with. But with it's an accusative, it means after. Okay? Well, you might be thinking, that one word can change whether it's being used with accusative or genitive. How will I know this? Well, <laughs> very simply, you're going to have to do what everyone else has done. You're going to have to memorize it. Meta with genitive means with. Meta with the accusative means after. Is it hard? At first, yes, it is. I won't lie to you. But once you work with it, once you apply these words and you pull them up and you see it, you can see where it's very, very easily discerned. 
especially when you're doing your translation. Okay. Let's get a look down to the next word here. Masculine word. Uranus. Uranus. It's where we get our planet Uranus from. Uh, Uranus means heaven. Okay. Next word. It's a verb. Pempo. Pempo. Pempo is a verb meaning I send. Okay. Pros. Pros is a very common word. Uh, used with the accusative, it means to. Okay. Pros with the accusative means to. Prophetes. Once again, it looks feminine. Machen tells us because of the masculine article that prophetes is a masculine noun. Okay? It means, well, prophetes, so we get our word prophet from. How about this next word down here? Technon. In the Greek, you'll notice that there are many different words for the word child. Pideon means a little baby. Well, technon is a very generic word meaning a child. Okay. Tapas. Tapas. Noun, masculine, meaning a place. So we get our word topology from. Topographic. Okay. Tapas. Our last vocabulary word that we're going to learn in lesson seven is the word pharaoh. Pharaoh. It means I bear or I bring. Well, there's vocabulary list, paragraph 77 of lesson seven. Um, memorize these words, put them to heart. Uh, don't get daunted by the fact that prepositions change and alter um, when you're working with uh, different case words. Uh, that's okay. You will pick them up. Trust me. Okay. Just get these down to memory, get them into your head, work it down, and study hard for your quiz that you'll have a vocabulary quiz in the next class. Okay? If you have any questions, or if you need help, or if you have any comments, please don't hesitate to contact me. Uh, my email address is at the end of this lesson. I'll be glad to help you out any way I can. Okay? Well, God bless you, and we'll be ready for the lecture in the next class. Uh, between then, you'll take your quiz on the vocabulary words. Thank you.